So you saw there were new sanctions imposed on, uh, in, in case it wasn't clear, trying to tell my friends in America, in case it wasn't clear until this point, the people in Chutzlaritz, the regime, the people you like to vote for, they are your enemy. They're the most vicious anti-Semites around. They're passive anti-Semites, so like uh, Roosevelt style. The Germans were busy killing the Jews, and the Americans and the British were okay with that during World War II, correct? They did nothing. Yep, yeah, that's just what they do. That is sort of the American regime, the Brandon regime in America, except they also impose sanctions. Where are the sanctions? They take away my neighbor's money, right? We saw the people down the block. Now, Yeshivat Harabait, what is their crime? Have they hurt anybody? Have they seized anybody's property? What is Yeshivat Harabait's crime? Jewing well, Jewish at the Temple Mount, correct? Have you been there? You know what I'm talking about. So now they had their, their, their accounts frozen. They can't receive money. They can't give money to their operation. They can't fund themselves. Great. That was a big, vicious anti-Semitic action. So comfy Jews saw what happened before Yeshiva Darbayit. Who did they sanction? Right-wing extremists, as they call them. Bensi Gopstein and others. You heard about this right before Passover. So uh, those comfy Jews, unfortunately, a lot of them are, by the way, in the gush. They say, well, it's good. You know, they, those, those Jews, they're the extremists. We're the good ones. We play by the rules. So, you know, I, I like them anyways. But they understand that. You're next. And that's what I'm worried about. They, if they can freeze their bank bank accounts, they're going to do it to mine. And I need I need money in order to live, you know. Well, only because I don't care so much about money. I'm not. I, it turns out I'm not the type of person who runs after money so much. You know, my wife tells me that. It's not like I have this go-getter thing to become rich. But we need a little bit of money just to pay the bills, right? Just basic stuff. So uh, I remember Gershon Baskin, you can't say you machshubo about a living Jew. So I hope he has a full recovery from his uh, Mishigas. He at least, after the after Shmiat Saras came to his realization that all the people he's been trying to hug and kiss and say we should make peace with them are vicious murderers, and they've been using him as a, as a tool. Okay? And I say it in, in, in the most uh, uh, inappropriate way, they've been using it as, as a tool, right? So you know who this is. He said when Obama, Yimach Shemov is a pro, was elected, he says, I think people are worried about what Obama is going to do. And I said, also, give him a chance. And it turns out Obama was the one who imposed the freeze. No natural growth. You can't tell my community you're not allowed to build anything new. It's like, no children. Your population cannot grow. You cannot reproduce. Okay, I'm not going to kill you. That's one step before I'm not going to kill. I'm just going to make sure that there's no more of you in the future. That's what he said. And that's what he did. So he said, right when it happened, he says that he now thinks that Israel has a has a friend who's willing to push them in the direction they need to go. Obama will guide Israel. Israel wants to build the Yishuvim and do these things, but Baskin, the rabid leftist, says now we have Obama here, and he's gonna he's a real friend to us. He's gonna help push Israel in the right direction. Well, Baskin, I hope that worked for you. Okay, a good friend will punish us. So we have to avoid these people. You have to wake up right now. We're we're sitting through history right now. In 1933, when this was happening, who was the who, and who are the people screaming about this that it's going to get much worse? People like Jabotinsky, and he and uh, uh, he died, I think, in 1941, died of grief about what was happening, and Rabbi Moshe Salvejik also. So they they were warning you, and now you're seeing it happen. So you have to worry about these people. So I see no greater endorsement and sign of goodness to see people like Bensi Gopstein being uh, uh, herent, being sanctioned. If the American regime is punishing Bensi Gopstein, it must be he's doing something right and he's the, he's the good guy. Look for whoever they're getting, getting up against. The Sharvid family, they're a bunch of tzaddikim. They never, you know, they, they would never harm a fly, right? And they have to be punished like this. He lives down the block. You go, you go meet them. Why do they have their money taken away from them? For having a farm. And for not backing down the face of all these attacks. And Yeshivat Arbayit. This just goes to show you how good work Yeshivat Arbayit has been doing if this is what they want to do to them. So give your money to Yeshivat Arbayit. You don't have to give it to any other Yeshiva in the world, just to them. Because they're the ones who need it the most, and they're the ones who are doing the most. Haraya. Um, it's also, strangely, it's to Bibi's praise that low-life American politicians like uh, uh, the fact that those reprehensible deplorables are attacking him means that he's doing something right. Yeah, he has a little bit of his chus there. Uh, so he's not as bad as the, re as the rest of them. 